Have you ever been to Washington, D.C.? It's the capital of our country, the United States of America. In Washington, you can see the Capitol building, the White House, and the Supreme Court. Inside these buildings, people work to run our government. Our government is based on three very important written documents. The Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Each document outlines our freedoms as Americans. Each document is different, but each one helps to shape our country. What do these important documents say? How are they different? Let's find out about America's founding documents. What is a document? Well, it's any writing that contains or provides important information. One of the first documents that helped shape our country was the Declaration of Independence. The year was 1776. There were 13 British colonies located on the eastern coast of America. Many colonists, the people who lived in the colonies, were upset with the British government. For many years, the colonists protested against unfair taxes and the fact that they didn't have representation in the British government. Sometimes the protests got violent. In response, the British government passed a series of laws to try to stop the unrest in the colonies. The laws became known as the Intolerable Acts. In 1774, delegates or representatives from every colony except Georgia met in Philadelphia, where they discussed how they would respond to the Intolerable Acts. It became known as the First Continental Congress. The delegates agreed to send a petition or letter to King George III asking him to repeal or put an end to the acts. The Congress also asked the colonists to start a militia, which is a military force made up of volunteers. King George became even more angry with the colonists and was determined to make the rebels obey. Soon, battles between the colonial militia and the British broke out. At that time, not all Americans were ready to break away from Britain. People who didn't want to split from Britain were called loyalists. People who supported a fight for independence were known as patriots. In May of 1775, the Second Continental Congress met in Philadelphia. The delegates decided to form a Grand American Army. In June of that year, George Washington was named Commander and Chief of the Army. In June of 1776, in Philadelphia, the Second Continental Congress named a committee to write a document declaring the independence of the American colonies from Britain. The committee convinced Thomas Jefferson to write that document. When it was presented to Congress, the delegates argued, debated, and made changes to the declaration. On July 2, 1776, the Continental Congress voted for independence. The written Declaration of Independence was dated July 4th, but it wasn't signed until August 2nd, 1776. John Hancock, the president of the Congress, signed his name right in the middle. The ideas and founding principles of our country were established in the Declaration of Independence. Part of the document reads, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Simply put, it means that everybody has equal rights that cannot be taken away. Some of those rights are that you can live your life freely and pursue things that make you happy and the government can only get their powers from its citizens. The Declaration of Independence was America's revolutionary document of freedom. It set the course for our nation, our government, and our journey of liberty. Now it's time to play Know the Declaration of Independence. Do you know the answers to the following questions? First one's up on the board. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? A. George Washington. B. George Bush, C, Thomas Jefferson, or D, John Adams? 
The correct answer is C, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Here's the next question. When was the Declaration of Independence signed by the delegates? A, August 2nd, 1776. B, January 1st, 1777. C, July 2nd, 1776. Or D, none of the above. The correct answer is... A. The delegates signed the Declaration of Independence on August 2nd, 1776. Now the final question. Who was the first delegate to sign the Declaration of Independence? A. Benjamin Franklin. B. John Hancock. C. Abraham Lincoln. Or D. Theodore Roosevelt. The correct answer is B, John Hancock. After the signing of the Declaration of Independence, America went to war with Great Britain so it could be free. It was called the Revolutionary War. It lasted many years. In the end, America won its freedom. It was a new independent country. Now the states were faced with forming a government for the country. Many Americans did not trust a strong central government like they had with Britain. They formed a government that gave most of the power to the individual states. The document was called the Articles of Confederation. But it didn't work very well. There were many disagreements between the states. So. Congress decided to meet at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Their goal would be to fix the Articles of Confederation. But one leader, James Madison, had a plan for a whole new government. He became known as the Father of the Constitution. The group of men who helped write the Constitution are called the Framers. Two of the Framers were George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. Everyone wanted a government that would be fair and keep its citizens safe and free. But there were lots of disagreements about the new government. Finally, the leaders agreed to a compromise. A compromise is when each side gives up something. The Constitution sets our government up so it's divided into three parts called branches. The legislative branch, called Congress, passes the laws. The judicial branch, headed by the Supreme Court, decides if the laws agree with the Constitution. And the executive branch makes sure that the laws are obeyed. The president is the head of the executive branch. The delegates debated long and hard about how to elect the president. Some thought it should be up to Congress. Others thought it was a job for the states. Still others considered having the people elect the president directly. So in the end, the writers of the Constitution came up with another compromise. It's called the Electoral College. With the Electoral College, each state gets a certain number of electors. The electors vote for president and vice president. The number of electors is equal to the number of representatives in Congress, which is determined by that state's population or the number of people who live in the state. For example, Maryland has 10 members in Congress, two senators, and eight congressmen. So Maryland has 10 electoral votes. Finally, the delegates of the Constitutional Convention signed the Constitution of the United States on September 17, 1787. The preamble or introduction of the Constitution reads, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty and our prosperity, do ordain and establish the Constitution for the United States of America. Simply put, it says that the people in our country hold the power. Citizens rule. The document outlines the goals of the government to make our country a peaceful place and to ensure that our rights and freedoms are protected. 
And now, let's play Know Your Constitution. Here's your first question up on the board. The person known as the father of the Constitution is A. Benjamin Franklin B. George Washington or C. James Madison The correct answer is C. James Madison All right, here's the next question up on the board. The delegates who wrote the Constitution are known as the A. Builders of the Constitution B. Framers of the Constitution or C. The Compromisers Correct answer is B, the framers of the Constitution. Here's our final question. How many branches of the government does the Constitution establish? A, three, B, four, or C, seven? The correct answer here is A, there are three branches of government the judicial, the executive, and the legislative branches. Here's a constitutional fun fact. There are 4,400 words in the United States Constitution. It's also the world's oldest and shortest written plan of government. Hmm. Now, in order for the Constitution to become law, Nine of the 13 states would have to ratify or approve it. Not everyone was happy with the Constitution, and there was tense debate about it. Some critics of the Constitution didn't want to ratify it because it had no Bill of Rights. That's a document that describes the basic rights of people. However, it was possible to add a Bill of Rights to the Constitution because the framers allowed for amendments or changes. James Madison initially wrote the Bill of Rights in 1789. It was ratified by the states in 1791. The first 10 amendments to the Constitution are referred to as the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment allows people to practice their own religion. It allows them to say and print what they want and gives them the right to gather peacefully and ask the government to listen to their complaints. The Second Amendment gives citizens the right to keep weapons and be part of the state militia. The Third Amendment states that during peacetime, people can't be forced to house and feed soldiers in their homes. The Fourth Amendment protects citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. The Fifth Amendment says that a person cannot be charged with a serious crime unless a group of citizens decides there's a good reason. The Sixth Amendment states that a person accused of a crime has the right to a fast and public trial by jury. The Seventh Amendment says that a person has a right to a trial in a civil, non-criminal case. The Eighth Amendment states that the government cannot require a high bail from a person accused of a crime. The Ninth Amendment says that the rights of the people are not limited to those stated in the Constitution. The Tenth Amendment is designed to protect the powers of the states. Today, the Bill of Rights plays a key role in American law and government. The Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Important documents that were created at different times and for different reasons, but all helped to establish the freedoms we all enjoy as citizens of the United States of America.